Thanks again for tuning back into the channel. In this week's video, we're going to be looking at Lightroom editing. Now, I normally from a Fuji Files edit and capture one, but I also use Camera Raw, which is basically Photoshop's version of Lightroom. 12 tips I think you should know, and hopefully they'll speed up your editing. To have a better visual representation, I would use the histogram to edit your image where you can see it shows the shadows, the blacks, the highlights and the whites and then just pull the sliders across there slightly and you'll notice that your image changes. You'll find this useful as you're eyeballing the image and not looking at a slider while you're doing it. Really works quick and you can always go in and adjust any of the elements via the sliders at the same time. The Select Sky Mask in Lightroom is really good. At times it can create some haloing and hard edges. So what you want to do is you want to go into these three dots and select Intersect Mask With and a Linear Gradient and then draw down the Linear Gradient. From here you can edit the sky, safe in the knowledge that it's not going to create haloing or hard edges. As you can't select the ground, what to do is go into the three dots, choose duplicate and invert mask, adjust the mask to where you want it to be, and then from here go and edit the rest and the foreground of your image. To see your image in black and white, simply press V in the keyboard and V to return back to colour. The colour range mask feature in Lightroom allows you to pinpoint certain colours within Lightroom of your choosing and you can also refine what you've already chosen within that. From here you can go in and adjust your colours to however you want them to be by simply adjusting the tint and the temperature of it. From here you can go in and choose any other elements within your image, go through the same process using a mask and a colour range, refine that range till you get exactly or nearly exactly what you're after and then go in and edit it accordingly to what you want to achieve with your final image. If you're sharpening in Lightroom, you adjust the amount slider, that sharpens the entire image. To be more accurate, hold down Alt on your keyboard and dial in the masking slider. Everything in white is being sharpened, everything in black is not being sharpened. To emphasise the glow of a sun and enhance an image, what you can do is you can add a radial filter with a feather of 100 and just draw that into roughly where you think it should be. From here, go in and edit certain elements of it, including the colour, the exposure, and you can also, depending on the elements within your image, make a dehaze, a negative dehaze within it. This image here does not need that, however. So once you've done that, you can actually go into the colour and select a colour that you think would help emphasise the final effect that you are going for with your image. Once you're happy with the positioning of the glow that you're adding, what you can do is you can get and subtract from that depending on the image that you're after. In this case, my flow and my density are turned down slightly and I am going to remove some of the area here just so that it gives more, provides more contrast to the glow. After that, I'm going to go in and add a second one to increase the intensity at the centre of the glow and again I'm going to change the colour slightly just so that I've got more control over the entire glow that we are putting into this image. And you'll see from the before and after it's quite a noticeable difference. If you want to see more than one image on a screen, perhaps for comparison view or if you're out to see if the work is a set, simply select the images that you want to see by holding down control and then press N in the keyboard and they will appear on your screen. If you want to add more to them, simply hold down control and click subsequent images. 
following some of the methods we've seen before, we're going to go in and just very quickly edit this image, just so that you can see how quick you can take a bland image and turn it into a more vibrant bland image in this case. And it's just using some of the skills you've already seen in the video. Once you're in here, you can add more masks and radial filters are one of my favourites where you can go in and you can adjust the light. But to be more accurate with that, you can intersect that again. And in this case, I am going to intersect it with a colour range. So I'm going to choose here and then I'm going to make an edit. And the edits are just going to be subtle because you can't push it too far because we have really confined the range of colour that we're going to edit. But once you've done that and you're quite happy, you can go back, finalise your image and then see the before and after. Horizons need to be level, especially if there's water concerned. So one of the things that I do is go into the crop tool, take the spirit level, draw where I think the horizon level is and hold down alt at the same time. This will enable a grid, which will allow you to once the grid straightens out allow you to see exactly and you'll be more accurate with your horizons if you use capture one you'll know that you can zoom in to do this but again within lightroom you can't do that as yet so taking the spirit level holding down alt and drawing a line will enable this grid to appear giving you more accurate results To select an object that's within, in this case, the sky, if you go down to object selection, you'll notice you have two options now. You can paint in with the brush or you can choose the object selection tool. Simply draw over your object and then go and edit it as you see fit. To change the background color, simply right click on it and cycle through the different variations. I would always check against white before sending to a printer. The point colour tool is one of my favourite features of Lightroom where you can go in and select a colour and then adjust the hue, saturation and luminance of that colour. But should you have a lot going on in the image, you can also click visualise range and that will make the rest of the image monochrome so that you can only see the areas that you are editing. You can also go back in, turn off visualise range and choose any other point within the image and do the same there as well. As you can see here, I only see the blues in the sky. And once you've finished editing, simply turn off visualise range to see your final image. <laughs> 